He's a radio host. Yeah. A graduate of American University. He is a station cooking competition silver medalist. He is also a former blogger at the Russell Street Report. And now, <laughs> Kyle, Sean Yo. Sharif is ready to add life coach to his resume. No, what is the Russell Street Report? You were out for this. We've got a lot to talk about during the next break because I forgot I've not shown you his blog posts from 20 years ago. You can do it next week. <laughs> you can do it next week. It's a Ravens like website, like a 20... 24 7 blogging the boys for the okay Ravens. is russell street like the name they're the yeah. street they're on yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. i get you uh, well, don't make below the belt about me <laughs> <laughs> i want i want i want to hear your lot you you talking about that you've got some advice for will mcclay that is that is what i want to hear now because i assume this is life coach this this would be it like is. some advice for it will is. mcclay so i'm very interested in hearing this and i also think it's going to largely tie into a lot of what i'm going to talk about anyway so you want so. me to go first yes Will, I know that you got it made probably here in terms of finances, comfort, relationships. It's a pain in the ass to move. Trust me, I know. Choppy knows. <laughs> uh, Bobby knows. Moving apartment to the next door apartment. By the way, do you know the average person moves almost a, almost twelve times in their lifetime? No, it's crazy. That was in that that was in that article during chopping it up about 12 moving times? twelve times. Okay, Nuts. let me think about me. All right, so including home, childhood. Home that yeah, yeah right lifetime like, yeah like the, so childhood okay well we, we were stable we were in one house well uh home to college college to Illinois Illinois back home home to to uh Kansas City Kansas City here I think I've had three apartments here then a house this will be I this will be number ten there you go and so I'll I'll end up at twelve yeah. We've moved right. three times in 11 years. I'd have to go back and tally it before then. But. Dude, Tim Collins, though. Oh, Die. my gosh. He's moved 11 times since he's worked here. Yes. Our assistant program director. I mean, I, I think he figured out something. Who's he running from? Who's who's he running uh, from? Who's sleeves. Tim, who's, who's Tim Collins sleeves. running he's from? He's running from sleeves. <laughs> Predators. So, sleeves. look, Will, moving is a pain in the ass, man. I, 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 I get it. You need to look for another organization to work for. If, mm. if what we believe is happening during this offseason with everyone just rolling out and Jerry and Steven not willing to go ahead and help make your job like a little less important, if winning a championship is important to you, because eventually it's going to turn on you. If they're not going to sign any free agents, it's going to be all the draft picks. An unreasonable expectation is starting uh, on Will McClay. Dude, roll up out of here. Go become an official general manager. Save yourself for your own good. Save yourself and get away from the Joneses so you don't go down with the ship. If something happens to Dak Prescott with the rest of this roster, it's over. Well, the great Cooper Rush could save us again, I guess. <laughs> yes, he could. If something happens to CeeDee Lamb, it's probably over. Will, before it's too late, man, roll out. You deserve better than what you're working with right now, in my opinion. There you go. So, life coach. I think that that's better help. Betterhelp.com. I think that that's. I, I think that's well said and a good summary of where things stand right now. The other night, Brian and I were recording Love of the Star and had no intention. It completely derailed the first segment. We were just going to kick off and talk about. Uh, I think we were actually going to lead off with Tyron discussion. We didn't even get to it till the second segment. Because Brian had said something about, look, this is, you're putting a lot of pressure on your personnel department right now. Oh, they are. Like, you are, you are telling them that, hey, we're not going to play free agency because uh, we got this. We, we got this over here. We, we got our, our great scouting department. We got what Will McClay's built over here and the great job Will McClay's done. They'll, they'll bail us out like, like, and keep us competitive like they've done with the draft for a decade now. And when he said that, it it made me, we, we both started talking about it a little bit. And I think that that's the biggest problem with not playing in the free agency waters this year. They've decided to punt on free agency completely, as you can tell. And by doing that, in one way, in, in one respect, it is a massive compliment to that entire personnel department. 
from the the lowest scouting assistant, scouting intern, all the way up to Will McClay. It is a massive compliment from the Joneses to say, we trust you to do this, to keep us competitive. Like, we, we don't even feel we have to operate in these waters because we know what you do and the great work you do, and we have so much trust in that. That is going to be our team building philosophy. In one way, that's really great. In another way, it's such a massive expectation and such massive pressure where the margin for error in these drafts moving forward is slim to none. Yeah, that's... I mean, they've operated like that, though, with free agency. They've operated this way with free agency for a long time, so they've always put a lot of importance to the draft. Isn't it funny, though? This is... They've typically, in past years, what do they do? They go out, they get Benson Mayo and Randall Cobb, or they'll do this yeah. and that. They a usually, fifth round pick in uh, early April. I, I I feel like I would need to research it. I feel like this is the fewest amount of signings they've made a week into free agency that I can remember. You know, also, is it's this one play? They're not even getting ro rotational special teams players. They're signing no one. Like, as of right now, like, this would be the most open positions available at training camp since Parcells got here. Or since Marcel's left, Ooh. if they if they were to go to camp today, right? I mean, am I wrong? Uh, no. Usually there's like usually there's like usually they know forty five ish guys that are going to make it. I don't think they know forty five guys that are going to make the team tomorrow. Well, I mean, for instance, you look at it and go, okay, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele, Tyler Smith, they're all on the roster uh, and they're they're going to be starters. So you go, okay, well they have three fifths of the offensive line. No, really, they have two positions figured out on the offensive line because they don't. I don't think they know for sure where Tyler Smith is going to play yet. And so even though you know he's going to be there, you don't know where he's going to fit. And so that makes the position unstable. But I think that I think Dallas's approach this season has gone just too, too far the other direction. It, it's always been pretty aggressive to the, the side of, hey, we're going to kind of lay back and, and just make some bargain. Bin. We're going to go to the, the bargain bin DVD. And we're going to pick up the dollar ninety nine thing of under the Tuscan sun. And we're going to buy that instead of going to the movie theater. But this year, they're just, oh, no, we don't need anything. We're, we're good. We got this draft. And they're doing it in a year where they don't have a fourth-round pick. And that's why part of me says, Sean, you know how yesterday you were talking about, I got to come up with some reason to help explain some of this. And so, I don't know. Is there something? Like, is Jerry tied on cash? And, like, you start thinking of alternative things. Because that, I got to think, is some of their slow play here that their aim is going to be, we need to move back in the draft. We need to move back, pick up picks. And so we're not totally concerned with the lack of draft picks and draft capital because we plan on moving back, stacking up draft picks in a deep draft, and we're going to address these things completely through the draft. Because right now, even if they hit on every draft pick reasonably in the first five rounds, because sixth and seventh are right. dice rolls, even if you hit on the first five rounds, it's not enough players to cover over what you've lost because you're missing a fourth round pick. You can hit all of them out of the park and you still have holes. And that's the, the thing where they don't have the capital to just kind of lay back like they are. So that makes me think they must plan on getting more capital. At well, some point. if they want an, if they want a, uh, an offensive lineman there, and let's just say they get to their pick and there's, there's, there's three they like on the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they were to move back to 30 and pick up an extra mid round pick, I mean, I could see them doing that here. Here's what's extra crazy about this strategy. If that is indeed the strategy, you're basing the strategy off of a failed rookie draft class. You, yeah. you, you don't have the Lions draft class. Now, I'm not saying they're going to fail. Right. I'm saying you're coming off a class of Mozzie, Schoonmaker, Overshone, Hurt, love you, our boy from training camp, Fahoko, Hurt all year, Richards, awesome Richards, best thing about him is his name, Eric Scott Jr., Deuce Vaughn, who we all fell in love with in the preseason, Jalen Brooks. So you didn't get a class in here that blew you away, and yeah. you're like, we'll do it again. You missed with a rookie season in terms of performance, and you want to do that again? You want to risk that again? Well, and that's the thing. The numbers say you are going to have draft classes like that. It's not you, like you may feel like you have a competitive advantage over teams because of your scouting department, your personnel department, and the work that they do they are still not going to have a 100% hit rate. So there's no margin for missing an entire draft class, which will happen at times. You'll have classes that are just like, yeah, that was weak. We didn't get the guys that we wanted there. But this organization has so consistently gone, all right, 
I know he had his deficiencies, but okay. You got Tyler Biotis to be a regular starting center who made a Pro Bowl in the fourth round. You got Deron Bland in the fifth round. You got Tony Pollard in the fourth round. Like, they've been so good at getting really good, consistent contributors from first round. Yeah. Second round's been a little more dicey because of the way they approach it. But you've gotten good, consistent contributors throughout your draft class, and you can't really afford to have what will naturally come, which is missing on a class every now and then. You're going to miss, but you know, even fourth rounders, even if they're good and they're hits, I mean, they're not necessarily hits right away. Yeah, they may not be hits at the end of the year or year two. And a fourth round talent could just mean you played in like 10 games. Right. Not that you were a stud. Right. I mean, you played yeah. some games. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like, I mean, look, Buffalo lost a lot of guys this year, right? Buffalo's in a similar spot. Um, You know, and, and, and but that, that, this is the nature of the sport when you've got superstars they do that you've got to pay I mean you're gonna to have to give up on guys I I just don't know we should look at other teams with this many all pros to see if we should cut them a break in terms of the re-sign I mean there's not this many teams this many all pros right I mean they have, didn't they have three other offensive line last year alone like who has that yeah I need to go back and look to their their draft success I know it's near the top of the league in terms of like how many other teams are really having to repay re-sign their own and, and pay their own to this extent, right? So we should that that that's a humongous factor that maybe they should be cut cut a break. I mean, they can be you can be a victim of your own success in the draft. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the it's look you, at this building with all our contracts up. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what do you? Chop, yeah. or, or the Cowboys of radio. Chop, yeah. Whenever whenever I've sent in emails or stories when I'm off work, you're like, I don't like that precedent. Don't set that precedent that you're you're gonna work when you're off. That, that's what that personnel department's done. They've gone so above and beyond and yeah. done things to stock this roster that now the Jones go, oh, you can do it again. You set the expectation. Cool. Let's do this. And I think it's put a ton of pressure on a scouting staff, a personnel department that has pulled miracles off before, but there's run, no Will. margin for error. Run, William, run. Run, <laughs> run William, run.